left engine um, um, containers and uh, on the cloud. So uh, what I would be talking to you about, I would believe that a few of us may be familiar um, with this topic. But uh, my goal here today is just to make it resonate more um, in our minds if um, we are familiar with it. And if we're not, uh, maybe we can just walk away with some good practices um, from this talk. So um, I know we're just back, but I would like to give you one minute to introduce yourself to the person sitting beside you. If you know the person sitting beside you, just ignore. Uh, talk to the next person. And just one minute, real quick. Yeah. If you know the person beside you, you can skip to the next person. So what we're doing, actually, we're doing port, port to port interaction. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. <laughs> Then we'll also try to talk about the importance of static analysis uh, in Kubernetes cluster. Then we'll look at some tools that we can use. And finally, we'll just look at how we can implement static analysis in Amazon EKS. So um, I'll leave room for you to ask questions, um, maybe towards the tail end of, the, of this talk. So in my many interactions with um, EKS customers, or containers customers generally, uh, one of the common tasks that I've gotten to engage customers with um, are questions you can see on the board. I just took a few um, to talk about them. So you see customers asking, how do I enforce best practices in my um, EKS cluster? Or how do I prevent an offending port? I mean, the first time I heard the word offending port, I'm like, what, what's going on here? So, <laughs> yeah, so we, you get those kind of questions. And the last one, which is very common, is how to track, how do I find the resource? And uh, we'll talk about how, you, uh, how customers are doing this. So in terms of, just a quick something here, uh, do I have any CTO or CEO or business owner in the house? Looks like we're all engineers. Um, what about developers? A software engineer, cool. And um, ops engineers. Now, this is what I mean by ops engineer, because they brought what we have security engineers, uh, DevOps, we have cloud engineer. So, how many ops engineers? So, um, if you are from a different profile, well, what do you work as, as for example? I'm a sales engineer. Sales engineer. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to um, put you in a business uh, profile. So now, um, what I've seen is that for the ops team, they have different concerns. They have different motivation. Uh, they have different mindsets, and they approach things differently. Then for developers, the developer is more concerned about shipping his code um, swiftly is more interested in, oh, I've written the code, I'm expecting the option to just deploy, and everything should go smoothly. But in terms of the business itself, um, the CEOs, the CTOs, they think more holistically, right? Their own concern is even, is, is not myopic, is not one uh, self-centered, and I'm not saying developers are self-centered, don't get me wrong. So what I'm saying is that we are all driven by um, our core background. So we tend to prioritize, based on our background, we tend to prioritize the way we work based on our background, right? So you see a developer is ready, is ready to ship his code. You see the ops guy taking his time to make sure that the code is safe, right? And he's able to deploy safely. 
Now, for the business, and what I would say is that security shouldn't be one person's concern. Security is everybody's concern. Everybody should play a holistic um, approach to security practice. So um, now, in terms of um, Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes attackers, we've seen that there are three common types. The first one is external attackers. Um, second one is a malicious container. And these are the gateways where you could uh, introduce a defect or a security loophole into your cluster environment. Then the third one could be a compromised user or a malicious user or a disgruntled engineer. Anyway, um, how, how many of you have seen that scenario where you have a disgruntled engineer and sabotage the cluster? Have you seen any? Okay, I think we are all lucky. Um, I've been less one anyway, so. Uh, but so this now brings me back to what are the uh, security one who what are the basic things that we have to do in terms of security? Um, we are familiar with the fact that we should implement least privilege, right? Um, this is you trying to give everybody um, access to what they need based on their job function. You are not overblowing um, privileges. You are not overblowing access. Um, you are taking a careful approach to define as a business what a team or what an individual should have access to. Then you tailor your permission to uh, what they need. That's what we call this privilege. This is what we expect um, that you should do in your environment. Now, the second one is turning on audit login. Um, if you want to have visibility into your environment, it's advisable that you always turn on login. It's in fact the best practice, and I regard it as a security one. Word. And uh, here in Amazon, we also encourage that you automate your best practices as much as possible. Um, yeah, you may not be able to automate everything, but the ones you could, you should automate. So that that way you'll be able to scale, you'll be able to move faster and you'll be able to roll out at large. Um, then another thing is layering your security, right? You don't want to just have one security door. Like, I mean, when you're coming into this premise, you have so many doors, you have to go through so many doors. So that's what it is about um, security as well. So you have to layer your security, and that will lead me to talking about what static analysis is. This is my main focus uh, for this talk. When you implement static analysis, what you're doing is that you're introducing an additional layer of security in your environment, right? Um, just a quick one. How many people in the environment right now, do you have static analysis in the environment right now? One, two, three, four, five, okay, six, uh, a few of us. So hopefully, at the end of this talk, we'll, we'll all be doing it. So now, what is static analysis? So this is actually, um, I know developers are very familiar with this topic, and it is a way of um, you trying to implement uh, a method where you um, conduct code analysis to find security defects in your environment, I mean in your code. So you are, uh, if whether you're doing it statically, um, whether you're doing by human intervention, or you are using um, tools like um, automated tools to carry out static analysis. Now, the point is you want to review code, you want to find defects, you want to find um, bugs, and before you actually deploy to production. So that way, um, the advantage you would have over any other cluster administrator that is not doing such is that you'll be able to catch um, security defects before you happen in your production. So you you get to proactively inter interact with every other stakeholders that are involved in that particular package, that code that you're trying to ship to your production environment. So now, what, what are the benefits? Like I said, you definitely have an improved security posture, right? Because now you are adding another layer 
of security in the environment. You are also going to have speed. Imagine, um, you are not waiting for the issue to happen in Chrome. 